Start game now. The Atari.io button is here because Atari.io, the website, celebrates Atari Day every 26th of the month, and that is the day of the month that this video is going to be released, and it brought with it today Crips of Chaos for the Atari 2600 by 20th Century Fox, featuring label art that looks like your standard dungeon art, except is, is that Luke and Leia? Help us, 20th Century Fox. You're our only hope. Very interesting label art there. Let's go ahead and take this 2600 game, pop it into my Atari 7800 Pro system, and find out how Crips of Chaos plays today. Let's go to the game. Crips of Chaos was published by 20th Century Fox and carries the copyright year of 1982. It is an original first-person dungeon crawling game for the Atari 2600. That's right, the 2600. According to the manual, your goal is to explore the Crypts of Chaos, a mysterious place that no one has ever returned from, kill as many monsters as possible, and steal their treasure. So just because they're monsters, does this give you the right to break into their home, steal their stuff, and murder them? That's monster discrimination, and that's just plain wrong. You do not enter the crypts unarmed. You have with you many tools to aid you on your journey, and they are arranged at the bottom of your screen below. From left to right they are the treasure sack, sword, wand, ring, peace symbol, and U-turn. If you enter a monster's lair, you can use the treasure sack to steal their treasure. The sword is for unlimited, short-range attacks, but it is ineffective against wizards. The wand has a limited amount of uses but can perform long-range attacks, although it won't harm dragons. The ring also has limited amount of uses, but it can steal health from the monsters and give it to you. The peace symbol basically has you begging the monster to leave you alone without fighting and will only work on trolls, eyes, wizards, and dragons. So you're telling me this whole time all Bilbo needed was a peace sign to use against smog? And the U-turn turns you around 180 degrees. Each level of the crypt is a giant maze, and there are four types of mazes in the game that repeat on various levels. For instance, floors 1, 5, 9, and 13 are all the same. Floors 2, 6, 10, and 14 are all the same. Floors 3, 7, 11, and 15 are all the same. And floors 4, 8, 12, and 16 are all the same. According to the manual, it seems the lowest floor is floor 18, but be warned, the deeper you go, the tougher the monsters. Speaking of monsters, the game has eight types of them wandering in the crypt. From weakest to strongest, they are trolls, frogs, snakes, skulls, blobs, eyes, wizards, and dragons. They come in different colors as well, with the colors representing how tough they are. From weakest to hardest, the colors are green, violet, bronze, light blue, red, dark blue, lavender, and gold. When in the maze, you press forward to go forward and use the U-turn to turn around 180 degrees. Typically, the maze is green, but it turns blue at four-way intersections. When at an intersection, you can move your tiny cursor near the bottom of the screen to the left or right to face a different path. The screen will also turn or just red at dead ends and T-sections where you can't go forward but you can turn to the left or the right. Each floor also has eight layers located at dead ends. These are purple and once you defeat the monster in the layer, you can use your treasure sack to steal the monster's treasure. Each level also has two red staircases, one that leads up and one that leads down. Whenever you start a level, you will always be close to the up staircase, making it easier to exit the crypt. To switch items on the bottom of the screen, you must push down on your joystick first and then to the left or right to select an item. To use a selected item, you must push up again and then left or right to control your aiming cursor and the button to use that item. This takes quite a while to get used to, and sometimes in the heat of battle, I would accidentally switch to my items when I wanted to aim my cursor. For instance, let's say you wanted to switch from a sword to a wand. You have to push down on the joystick, then right to pick the wand, then up on your joystick, then aim your cursor, and then press the button to fire. When a monster does show up, you are frozen in place until he is dealt with. Points are added to your score, which is located at the top right of the screen. But if he hits you, your hit points located on the top left of the screen goes down. When your hit points hit zero, your game is over, but you can use the ring to steal hit points from the monsters. You also get bonus points for reaching the exit of the crypt on the top floor in all but one version of the game. 
The manual also gives a ranking based on how many points you earn, the lowest being 0 to 1,000 for a surf, and the highest being 3,000 to 4,000 for a night, and other ranks in between. The game has four different variations. The first variation is normal gameplay. You begin on floor 5 with 90 hit points, 127 wand charges, and 31 ring charges. The second version of the game begins you on floor 9 with 90 hit points, 63 wand charges, and 15 ring charges. The third variation is the toughest. You begin on floor 13 with 90 hit points, 31 wand charges, and 7 ring charges. Variation 4 is the practice game. You begin on the first floor with 90 hit points, 255 wand charges, and 63 ring charges. And you do not receive any points for leaving the crypt alive on this level. If you get all 8 treasures from the layers on a single floor, and then go down to the next level, you will get 10 extra charges for your wand and 2 for your ring. However, the game never displays how many charges you have left, so either you have to keep track of it yourself or just hope you don't run out when you need it the most. The difficulty switches can also affect how often monsters appear. If both difficulty switches are in the B position, wandering monsters appear at the standard rate. If one is in the A and the other is in the B position, then they'll appear twice as often, and if they're both in the E position, wandering monsters appear four times as often. Graphically speaking, I thought the game was impressive for what it's trying to do. I do wish that some of the walls and the stairs and everything looked a little bit more different from each other, but the monsters looked really cool and I liked how they scaled towards you. The sounds in the game are okay and there is no music. Family friendly wise, this tries to be a creepy game and there are magical elements involved, but chances are only very young kids would be scared of this one. On eBay, I only saw complete copies that sold and they sold typically for about $30 to $35 including shipping. So what did I think of Crypts of Chaos? Well, I found it to be a very ambitious title for the 2600, probably too big of a title for the system. It's really impressive what they pulled off, and the combat can be fun, but the controls can be frustrating at times, and the large levels combined with no maps or even display of how many weapon charges you have left really add some big hurdles to overcome. So where am I going to rank Crypts of Chaos? Well, it's a bit of a tough one to rank, to be honest with you. On one hand, I found it very easy to get lost, so odds are I would only play to combat at the monsters, and that can be enjoyable. Now I did like both E.T. and Pac-Man more, but unlike their reputations I actually can enjoy playing those games. However I do like the combat action more than that of Carnival at 28, so I'm going to make Crypts of Chaos my new number 28 game. Crypts of Chaos has both moments of fun and frustration, but it's also technically very impressive for the system. At this time I'd like to thank Rosdauer for trading me this game and I'd like to encourage you to go check out the forums over at Atari.io. If you enjoy retro related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons. You can now support the show through Patreon as well, just follow the link in the description below. Also be sure to check out some of my many other videos covering Atari, Sega, Nintendo more with over 175 now posted, there's something for just about any retro fan. Thank you all for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Sword Gamer. Take care and remember, monster discrimination is wrong no matter how much gold you get out of it.